So there's really a lot of food here. Whoa! Fresh harvest. So this was from one plant. And like you mentioned, there's probably some more under the ground that broke off, yeah. right? At least one piece. So this is about 21 pounds. 21, nice. Yep. And then, you know, if you remove some of the peel and the tops and stuff, it probably ends up being Maybe 15 pounds of good edible stuff. Hi, I'm Emily Jameson. I'm the uh, kitchen manager here at Hart. Awesome. What are we doing in here today? So uh, we have cassava, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to process it and some of the things that I do with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so first we should talk about how to peel cassava. Um, there are two layers in the peel there's this papery um, brown layer and that's really thin but that is not all you need to get off if you look really close you can also see that there's a second thick white layer there and you need to get the entire thing off um, that's where a lot of the toxins are concentrated so it's really important to get that off all the way so i like to cut the cassava into pieces about this size and just use my knife and make a little slit and usually the skin just kind of peels off. Different varieties peel better than others. Um, if the cassava is older, it doesn't peel quite as well. But sometimes it all comes off in one piece. Um, if it's really not peeling well, then sometimes I'll just take a peeler. But if you just use a regular vegetable peeler, you need to go over it multiple times because that skin is so thick and it is very important to get it all the way off. in the skin why we want to get it all off um hcn which is hydrocyanic something Acid. uh yeah so basically when you eat it and you digest it it turns into cyanide in your body so there are bitter and sweet varieties of cassava and basically that tells you how much cyanide is in the in the roots so bitter varieties they taste bitter Cyanide tastes better, so. Um, yeah, you can even. Yeah. You can nibble a piece to see. In the U.S., you're mostly only going to find sweet varieties. This is a a touch bitter. Um, if the roots are in the ground for a really long time, they tend to be more bitter. But for the most part, if you're buying cassava at the grocery store or something, and most of the cassava that people are growing, it's the sweet varieties. They're really low cyanide content, so not something that you need to be super paranoid about. But if your cassava does taste better, then you might need to do um, extra processing to make it edible. So with the sweet varieties, um, if you lick it or take a little nibble of it and it doesn't taste bitter at all, then you have a sweet variety. And for that, you can, well, you can boil it in whole chunks like this. Um, you can cut it up smaller. This knife sucks. Um, I like to, a lot of times I'll cut it into pieces like that, boil it that way. Um, so you can just boil it and eat it just like a potato. Um, you can also, I like to fry it up like home fries. I'll boil it and uh, put it in the fridge until it cools down. Um, Oh, strain the water off and then put it in the fridge until it cools down and then just pan fry it to make like hash browns or something home fries uh, that's really good that's probably my favorite way to eat it like on a low processing method that's that's definitely my favorite thing um, if you're boiling it and eating it fresh you probably want to change out the water I don't like to just put it raw into a soup I boil it separate and then add it to a soup or something like that yeah, but so my favorite way to eat cassava is uh, more complex. Uh, cassava tastes something like potatoes. It's kind of starchy, um, but it's a lot denser. And you can see here there's a woody 
core that goes down the center. And it can just be, I mean, that's, you, can, you can cut it out, you can pick it out, um, but even the rest of the root still, it's all pretty fibrous. Um, and so it tastes good, but a lot of people don't like how dense and chewy or fibrous the texture can be, um, especially if your roots sat in the ground for too long or if they're really dry or something. Um, so I, I really like to do a, a more thorough processing of cassava. So I like to make it into a paste, basically. And I have some right here. Um, and then bake with it or dry it into a flour. Um, cassava is not super shelf stable. You're probably gonna get it you're gonna have it for like a week after you harvest. And after that, it really starts to degrade in quality. It'll start growing mold throughout it. Um, it gets harder to peel as it gets older. So I like to process a whole bunch of it all at once and have it to use throughout the year. Um, you can just peel the roots like this, put it in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer and pull it out later. That works really well too. But um, I like to peel it all and turn it into a pulp. So there are a few ways you can do that. You can just grate it with a box grater, which takes forever and it's not worth it in my opinion. Oh, yeah. This is what I one of my favorite things that I make with the with the pulp. It's a cassava flatbread. Um, so three I have three different ways that I make it into a pulp. Grate it. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, you can cube it like this and put it in a blender with a, as little water as possible um, and blend it into a paste. If you don't have a good blender, uh, it's going to be a little bit chunky and those that woody core that goes down the center, you're going to have some chunks in there, um, which is fine. Um, but if you have a really high, I have a Vitamix, so that's how you're going to get a, a paste that's this smooth. You're not going to get something that smooth if you don't have a really high powered blender. Um, and then the third option is to run it through a juicer, which is a really nice way to do it too. That's how I had been doing it for years before I got my Vitamix. But um, so after you get it into a paste, then I um, put that paste in a nut milk bag and I squeeze out all of the liquid. Um, a lot of the cyanide compounds are, well, they're water soluble. So, um, they're coming out in that liquid. And so you're reducing the toxicity. If you have any bitterness in your cassava roots when they're fresh, that's a really good way to help reduce that bitterness and help get the cyanide out, um, is to press the liquid out. You can also put it in a cheese press if you make cheese and have a cheese press. I take this paste, this pulp, and you can add sweetened condensed milk and coconut milk and shredded coconut and make a nice cake. You can add eggs and oil and stuff and make a, a nice flatbread like this. You can dry it and turn it into a flour. To me, those are, those are my favorite ways to, to cook with it. If they have any bitterness, then I'll soak the whole root for, after I peel it for like 24 hours or maybe 48 if, um, if I feel like I need to. If it doesn't taste bitter at all, I don't bother. Awesome. Yeah. And then this pulp lasts in the fridge for, I've had this in the fridge for two weeks and it's still perfectly fine. I have other pulp in the fridge that I've had for three weeks and it's still good too. So, and you, then you can also dry it into flour. So, or freeze it like this and have it for later. Nice. Easy to grow. Grow cassava. Eat yep. cassava. So I want to add a little disclaimer about uh, juicing cassava. If you have a really nice juicer, you should not run your cassava through the juicer. I go to a thrift store and I buy a cheap $5 juicer that I don't care if it breaks. Uh, juicers aren't meant to deal with huge quantities of a root that's that tough and fibrous. So go to a thrift store, buy something cheap. They usually last me one or two seasons of cassava processing, sometimes three if I'm lucky. So, yeah. 
don't, don't ruin your juicer. But in a few weeks, hopefully, I will have a blog post up about how to make this pulp and cook with it and turn it into flour. So there will be a link in the description if I have it done. Sweet. So. Down below. Down below.